What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buccaneers franchise, episode 42. And guys, we're coming off of another big win. A big one over the Cardinals. And now we are on to our final three weeks of the season. Where are we going to go when it comes to the playoffs? Right now, we have the first seed. And we, we have the control of that as long as we can keep winning. But we know the Falcons are directly on our tail. We also have to worry about the Eagles, right? I mean, obviously, we can still be in the playoffs and not be the number one seed. But number one seed just feels so good, right? It would love to say that we are the number one seed in the NFC. But we have a few weeks to do that yet. Luckily for us, we have some pretty simple games to make that happen with. We have the Panthers twice, and then we play the Seahawks once. The Seahawks are sitting at five and nine, same with the Panthers. So two teams that are struggling right now. And now it is the late part of the season. They might be looking to play a little bit of spoiler, especially the Panthers. What I'm trying to say is we're not going up against like the top teams, right? We have a solid opportunity as long as we stick to things. We don't let, you know, the, the game turn into a trap game. We don't let, we don't take our foot off the gas. We can easily get these victories and close this season out with a big win. Now, what I am thinking is I want to take a little bit more of a look at the college players, just a little bit, not too much. And then we'll get straight into the Carolina game. We just saw the stats last week. We looked at the team stats as well for a little bit. So I think we should be good there, but I do want to take another visit at the prospects coming up to just get a better idea of what, what we're looking at. So just a little refresher. We have gone with a much different approach this year to the draft. We are not going to be focusing too much on the skill positions. We're really trying to focus on some of the uh, linemen here, the, the, the tackles, and we also went defensive ends in some areas and D tackles. So we have some good information out there about some of the players. And um, we also did some unlocks. I think it was, yes, Amari Moore. We ended up unlocking fully. And then also Dominic Alexander. So Dominic Alexander is somebody that I would love, love for us to be able to draft free safety. In my mind, I would love to be able to take him play him as free safety and move Antoine Winfield to strong safety because I feel like with his play style, he would be a great fit at strong safety, playing up in the box and whatnot. But chances of us being able to land Alexander are slim right now, especially with us going to the playoffs right now as the number one seed. So I probably have to take my expectations down a notch for what we'll be able to get in the draft. And then looking at this draft board here, this is all of like in, in the order of what the rankings have them right now. And I think he's, where is he? He's like in the 10 to 15 range or something like that. Maybe a little bit farther back. Oh, right here, 21. So 21st ranked player, even a 21st pick, I don't think we're gonna have. At this point, we're gonna end up having at least like a 24, 25 if we don't have higher. So it is gonna be tough. And who knows what'll happen when the draft comes. You know, I, I like to always spice things up a little bit and try to find ways to move around in the draft, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So we're going to try and look more at players in this range down here to see if we can find a player or two that sort of catches my attention. The first couple that pop up that we know a lot about are Trent Molden and Andrew Quintana. So we know Molden is not the talent that he should be given his projection right now. He's just a little bit behind at round two to three, but we know Andrew Quintana is right on par with where his talent is. So he's 6'5", 297. This would definitely be more of a defensive end in our system, you know, with our 3-4. And right now, that's really up for, for grabs. I mean, yes, Baker had a, a good game a couple weeks ago. Kansi's made a few plays, but neither have really established themselves as like, holy crap, we cannot replace this guy. So I very well would be looking to bring in some competition at that position. Looking at his physicals, great to elite agility, jumping and speed, solid to good in strength. Um, and acceleration, and then good to great change of direction. So overall, not too bad, especially for a D tackle. The only concern I might have is if he has solid to good strength. I think that should play okay if he plays D end, because you know he's not going to be always going after just like the center and guard and getting double teams. He might be getting one on ones on the outside a little bit more, or at least um, you know with the edge rushers coming off, he won't be double teamed as frequently. And then looking at his actual skills, we have A play rec and power moves along with impact blocking and tackle. So four A's in four very key positions. The one area though, where he's lacking, block shedding. That is a C. I like his awareness at a B. Finesse moves being at a C, it doesn't bother me as much, but I like to have a line that can stop the run. So 
Block shedding being a C is a little bit of a hindrance for me, but with all those four A's, I feel like block shedding is easy enough to work on, especially if I go run stopper for his upgrades. And given the video that I put out not that long ago about upgrades, you know that we can get block shedding if we need it, right? We, we know that that's a skill that you can get. That's not an issue at all. Um, so that's not really holding me back from considering him. Plus he has B injury, which is awesome to see. Not an F or a D like it seems like everybody else does. His stamina is crap, but uh, we, we can live with that. So as of right now, I really, really like Andrew Quintana. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna add him to my favorites list. And here's a corner, Percy Calloway. Six foot, 194, 22 years old out of Georgia. And I know that corner is something that we need to look at, for sure. I would love to get Amari Moore, but again, top five talents, top five projection. I just don't see us being able to do that. I, I just don't. Um, right now, the physicals, though, not something that is really jumping off the board to me. Solid to good speed and acceleration. If you're going to be on, like, not the slow side, but at least not the, the faster side, I would really like to see some height. You know, 6'1", 6'2", of course, 6'3", 6'4". That would be amazing, too. But if you're going to be six foot flat, I feel like you need to have a little speed, right? And looking at his skills, he does have B zone, but his play recognition is D. Man coverage is a C. Awareness is going to be good. But it is, he's he's definitely a mixed bag. Definitely a mixed bag here. Because I think that with our 3-4 with the, the Miami Dolphins defense, yes, of course we run zone, but we do run man. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, we do run quite a bit of man at times. And him having a, a C man coverage and play recognition being so low, that might really hurt him when it comes to playing for us in our system. Especially if we want him to be an outside corner at some point. Drew Barker is a right guard, and he sort of fits the bill. 6'5", 340, 21 years old. He is obviously going to be a power archetype with that weight. I, I mean, I, I don't need to see the archetype to know that's what he's going to be. Uh, physicals, sort of mixed bag, but not too bad. And then skills, run block power in A, awareness of B, same with pass block. And then it's a lot of up in the air yet for the rest of the stats that are going to matter. But having run block power be an A is a big component because obviously... As a guard, you're going to be going against D tackles. You're going to need power and strength to do so. And his strength being great to elite is going to help in that category quite a bit. I, I'm not a big fan of going for Lyman early in the draft, especially a first round pick. But, you know, at the end of the day, we do have to understand that we have to take what's going to be given to us. You know, and I'm not I'm not going to take a player that I think sucks. Like, I don't know, let's just say Matthew Stork who's got a D finesse move C block shed. Maybe, maybe he's good. I'm just using it for an example, but I'm not going to take a guy like Matthew Stork, who I know might not be good just because he's in a position I would rather take in that round if I feel that the better player is the guard that I'm I'm sort of wishy-washy on. And so far, Barker does have some decent stats. Um, Sean McNair is another one that I'm looking at. 6'5", 325. He is 22 years old. Awareness and impact block both have an A. He's got a little bit better physicals. Great to elite, good to great, great to elite. Yeah, a lot of good to great at the bare minimum. And then it also looks like his pass block power is an A. Run block power is a B along with lead block. And where is his pass block fin finesse? Okay, A to C. So we don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, I'm hoping it's an A. That would be awesome. But we, we just don't know. Injury C to F. We don't know what that is yet. I'm going to add him to my favorites list for now as well. Chad Loud, defensive tackle out of Oklahoma, 6'5", 305. He could be more of an in-between guy for us as well. He's not exactly built to be a nose tackle, but he doesn't. it doesn't look like he's going to have the skill set to be a defensive end. He might be better fit for a 4'3 than a 3'4". He does have A power moves. Block shedding is a C. Yeah, I, not a fan. Another guard that sort of jumped off the page to me was Keelan Jackson, 6'4", 316. He is 21 years old out of Georgia. And he's got a lot of really, really good physicals. Great to elite on everything except jumping. So he is he's going to have really good physicals. A impact, A run block finesse. And then he's got a lot, an A to C spread on literally everything else. So we don't know what it's going to be, but we could find out a little bit more. Like if I did him as a, a focus player later, just to find out maybe to close the gap on some of those spreads to see if it's A to B or B to C. Um, that could really earn the tides in his favor to be drafted later on. And he is ranked 42nd, so it might not even have to be a first round pick. And we always have the option too. If we get, let's say we have a pick 25, 26, somewhere in there, who knows, maybe 32, and we don't really want a player there, 
Maybe we can trade back, recoup some of the, the draft capital that I have sort of given up over the last couple of years to try and move up and get the players like Taylor Wharton, like Tyler Chambers to, to bring the pieces in that I wanted. So that's always another option too, is trading back. We don't always have to trade up. Uh, Jared Greer though is somebody that I'm very, very high on. 6'3", 318. I definitely am probably gonna do another focus player on him because I feel like he could play guard for us and he already has a lot of A's. A's in awareness, impact, run block, and lead block. I mean, pass block is a B. Run block power is a B. So this guy is, is super, super high on my list right now. I'm definitely going to put him down as a favorites player. Uh, Calvin Castle is another one that I didn't get a chance to do the focus on, but I'm considering doing. 6'4", 307, 22 years old. I'm just not sure if he's going to be fit to play defensive end or if he'd be better suited in a 4-3 uh, as a D tackle. He doesn't have the best physicals, some good ones like strength and change of direction and acceleration. Um, a impact, A play rec, B power, stamina, and awareness. So he does have some quality pieces. It's just, is it round one worthy? I'll still add him to the list. Maybe not very far up on the list, but he'll be on the list nonetheless. And then the very last player down here is Troy Coleman. So they only do 50 now, so they don't even show you all the players. These are the kind of changes that just make me wonder why. You used to be able to go all the way down this list. I don't know if you guys know that, if you ever mess around with that enough. You used to be able to go all the way down when you were on all regions and all. It didn't stop you at the top 50. And they just made it to where you can't. It just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. <laughs> like... There's, there's planning involved outside of the first round. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm looking at a player in the rounds two to rounds four area, I need to know where he's ranked against all of the other players. So I need, so like for positioning purposes, right? If I'm, if I have a back end third round pick and this guy is like teetering on high third, mid third round territory with his projection, like with his ranking, I have to assume some teams might have him in that area and I might need to move up if I want to get him. You know, so like it's, it's imperative to know where they are projected amongst all of their peers. So why would you stop it at 50? Like our process here for drafting is already limited as hell. Like we have the, the capacity of drafting and scouting in this game that you would have expected we would have had in like 2005 on the PlayStation 2. And we don't, it's, it's 2024. We have PS5 or PC or Xbox, whatever you're playing on. And we're capped at 50 prospects we can see stacked against each other. Like that's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, I understand I can look at the positioning, but that's not the same thing, right? That's not the same. Like I can, I know that Cole Huffman is a round one projection, but where, you know, is he the, the very first round one projection or is he the last round one projection? I need to know these things. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy to me how little they, they, they add to this. And then, then they, they dare to tell us that they've made it better in the last couple of years. And then they, it's just little things like this, right? It's little things like this. Like somebody decided that it was important enough to remove this feature from the game for us because they just think we wouldn't care. Why are you taking anything away? Add it to the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I'm done believing you don't have room. I played GTA five online and the actual game on this system for the last 12 years which means the game was made in like 2013. So you mean to tell me that we had enough space to create an entire world and all these storylines and all these vehicles and all this customization on in 2013, but we don't have the ability in 2024 on a single sports title. I don't buy that. Do better. That was my little rant for the day. Um, yeah, this stuff that just bothers me. It just grinds my gears. So. Carolina, first time we're seeing them this season. Of course, we've seen them plenty in the past as they are a division rival. Bryce Young has gotten a lot better. He's an 85 overall, superstar development, but he is still not having the best season. He's actually gone down so far. I mean, he's not gone down, but it's, you would expect to see a bigger jump here, right? 2023 rookie year, you have 26 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. I would expect to see a little bit better, which you did. 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions, protected the ball a little bit more. 
But now we're three games away from the end of the season. You have the same amount of interceptions as your rookie season and less touchdowns. I would have at least expected you to have 30 touchdowns at this point as a starting quarterback, third year player. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I, I guess I would expect more. I'm not sure how he got up to an 85. Miles Sanders is still the running back along with Ty Tyrion. Is it Tyrion or Tyrion? Ty Tyron, Ty golly, Tyrion. Maybe it's Tyrion Davis Price. I like him. 6'1", 220. He's like built exactly how I would like to have a running back. And that running back is Adrian Peterson, right? Just the way he played. Every time I see a running back that's like 6'1", 220, I immediately like him. I, I know it's weird, but that's just who I am. Uh, they also have Lindsey Mann behind here. Rookie, 5'10", 195. He's wearing number 18. That will not be there for a long time. And if you guys don't remember, Mike Williams came over here in free agency from LA and is now the number one receiver. They also brought in Michael Thomas from the Saints and Chase Claypool. Wow. They have done everything in their power to hold Jonathan Mingo down. Everything. Brought in a washed up Michael Thomas. I mean, I can understand the signing of Mike Williams. You want a big body guy to go up and get the ball. But why in the hell is Chase Claypool here? Have we not learned anything from this man? Do not put him on your team. Honestly, you want to know what? I think I'm going to make Jonathan Mingo the starter. He deserves it. He's 24. He's within three overalls of the number two guy who's 32 years old. There's no reason that Jonathan Mingo should be buried on this depth chart. I will make sure that Mingo is playing in this game. And then they also have Jeffrey Jenkins, another uh, young receiver as a rookie. Ooh, 6'4", 223. Okay, now you're talking to my style. Oh, wow. I need to change that up for sure. You are looking rough, dude. Okay. At tight end, David Njoku, former Brown, is in the building. Tommy Tremble, the backup. Tommy Tremble has always been a reliable tight end that has just never been good enough to be like a number one. He's a, he's a great number two, but he's just never really elevated himself to that, that level. And they also drafted Troy Jackson, 6'3", 249, as their third tight end on the line. Ekem Equano. Equano is going to be a stud. Well, he is one. 24 years old, 84 overall. They are set there at left tackle. They have Lake and Tomlinson in the middle here, along with Natane Muti. Muti? Every time, dude. Lloyd Cushenberry in the middle. Austin Corbett on the outside on the right side of the line. And along with Taylor Wayne, second year guard. 6'2, 324. A little bit undersized to play guard, but it looks like he's got the speed. 80 acceleration. That's pretty good for a lineman. And then at right tackle, they have Taylor Moten, but they do not have anybody in line there. So that might be something they have to look at in the offseason. Who is going to be filling in for Moten once he decides to hang it up or move on? He's getting pretty expensive there. Look at that penalty. Look at that savings. He is costing them a ton of money right now. Boogie Basham Jr. on the left side of the line. And then they have Derek Brown on the other side. So a very good right end here. They also drafted Gregory Owens a year ago. He is not getting much playing time. Uh, Andrew Billings in the middle, along with Derek Nottie. Their defensive tackles were a lot worse than I thought they were. Why did I feel like they had somebody different last year? Of course, they still have Brian Burns on the outside. In the middle, it's Shaq Thompson and Stephen Cofield, rookie middle linebacker. This guy was high on the draft board for the middle linebackers. He might have been like the second or third guy. 77 overall. He has normal development, but he's going to be pretty good for them. 87 speed, 88 tackle, 77 block shedding. 89 acceleration so he's got decent zone impact blocking is good Ooh, injury is 74 that is not good well but they do have a young linebacker now to build up they also have chris barnes back there as well and then on the outside is dj johnson as the other uh, left or the other edge rusher and steve Irwin, the the crocodile hunter they drafted the crocodile hunter and he is Oh man, dude, you got a big head for, for your body, dude. I'm gonna have to change that. Okay. But Steve Irwin, another draft pick of theirs. 75 overall, 73 right now because of the morale loss because the team has not been doing very well. But he's got a 90 acceleration. So, I mean, he's got some decent abilities to him. Just gotta unlock him. That play wreck has gotta come up. Holy cow, that guy doesn't know what he's looking at to save his life. Uh, injury is very good at 93 though. So that's, that's a, a, a good thing for them. Corners. JC Horn, 88 overall, Dante Jackson, 82. They have Christian Fulton as well, along with Matt Taylor, who they drafted a year ago. 
and Derek Williams. So two young corners buried on the depth chart once again. It's a running theme in this franchise file. Jeremy Chin, the free safety, and Von Bell at strong safety. All right, so both teams are fully healthy as we head into the um, to the weekly strategy here. We don't have to worry about anybody missing time for either side. And with that, I still feel like, I know they like to pass it. They sort of carved us up to last time. If you guys remember, they, I think it was Mingo too, that ended up sort of getting us pretty good in the medium area. And yeah, I know, I, I say it every week. I'm gonna do medium pass again. I just like it. I don't want us to give up too much in the middle. I want a little bit of extra boost when we're calling that cover three, you know, cover four looks or more, more cover three and cover six. But I, I want that extra boost when we're calling those coverages. Last week we did blitz counter. It did work out well. This week, I think I want to throw it though. I want to try to throw a medium. Yeah. Yep, that's what I want to do. Oh, let's throw it medium. Let's try and stretch the field a little bit with our playmakers. We got plenty of them. We got to use them. And then on to the game plan goals. Well, we just said we want to throw it medium. So I think 350 passing yards. That's a big goal. I don't think Chambers has had a 300 yard passing day yet. It's been very few and far between where he's had a really good statistical day. He's had good games, but the statistics don't always seem to follow that. And with that, we should be able to get 400 offensive yards. I, I mean, if we throw for 350, we better be able to rush for 50, right? And then here for the head coach goal, um, let's go for 15 first downs. We want to make this a full offensive onslaught on this team. All right, I'll go ahead and do these mini games, and then I'll see you guys after if we have any upgrades. I think I am cheating the system. I, 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 I honest to God, I think I am. Or they changed something. I'm either cheating, and I don't know how, or this game changed how frequently you can get dev trade upgrades since I posted the video about doing your, your training every week. Because this is the third one this season. And guess who got this one, guys? I do him last every single time I do the training because it's the most mind-numbing and horrible training to do. And it's the DB battle. And do you guys want to know who I do the DB battle with every single week now for the last, like, I don't know, eight or nine weeks because of how he's been playing? None other than Najee Flowers. Najee Flowers just got upgraded to star development. You can see it right there. He was normal. He's now star. That is so fitting. I mean, if there was anything that was fitting, it's that. He has been playing lights out all season for a guy who is supposed to be a, a potential preseason body, maybe practice squad player, sticks the active roster, makes plays, gets himself in the game, and now he just got upgraded to star development. That is, that's awesome. And now it is time for the uh, upgrades for the week. Tyler Chambers is gonna get another upgrade and we are gonna stick that straight to Field General. He's gonna get awareness, deep accuracy, mid middle accuracy, throw under pressure, and an ability slot, which doesn't really matter because obviously we, are, we don't do abilities here. But he is now up to an 80 overall. Uh, Timmy Baker is going to get an upgrade and we are going to do, um, I think I want to do run stopper here. I don't care about his finesse. Block shedding is decent, but his awareness and yeah, impact. I think we got to go definitely going to go run stopper here. Oh, look at that. Jumps up to a 79. Gets an extra morale boost, two to block shedding, one hit power, one play recognition and one pursuit. It's a good upgrade. Nathan Givens is also going to get an upgrade and we are going to get him um, I think I want to go deep thread here for him or possibly actually I'm maybe considering going playmaker here. I mean, he's got a lot of really, really good statistics already, but if we can get some of these secondaries up a little bit to make him a more well-balanced player, that might be not a bad play. Plus it has the ability to potentially give us injury if I remember correctly. Now I'm going to go, I'll go, I'm going to go slot. I really need this guy to be able to play on, on the field at all times. Yeah. I'm gonna make a better judgment. We'll go slot for him. And look at that, he gets plus three to awareness, one to catching, one juke move, and two to medium route. That's actually a lot of awareness there for him. That's good. What are we at now for that? Oh, it doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us his awareness. I forgot on this screen. How stupid is that? 
Oh, well, well he got it. <laughs> All right. Alec Patterson, another guy that's getting an upgrade, and we're going to go power here for him. We definitely need to build up that power. It's starting to fall behind a little bit. Well, it's been behind, I should say. Awareness, pass block power, and two to run block power. And then Derek Green. Green was a guy that we signed last year. We thought might have a chance to make a name for himself, gave him an opportunity to start, but he just never really did anything with it. So now he's an outside linebacker. He's backing up um, Jermaine Johnson. We'll go speed rusher. He gets one to excel, one to awareness, and two to finesse move. But he's still got a future, man. He really does. It's not that he's going to be a bad player. He's just not the player we were hoping he would be and be able to step up to. But that play recognition is definitely hurting him. So hopefully he can get up uh, some more of that in the near future. But all right, that is all the upgrades. Oh, we did have two injuries this week uh, at practice. We have lost Paul Bronson and Cody Mauk. Mauk seems like he's hurt every week anyway. But Paul Bronson, dislocated shoulder from practice. That's going to be a big shot for our secondary. He's been holding it down in the slot, which means we're going to see a little bit more of Duke Shelley this week, guys. All right, guys, we are just starting off. Yes, 6-10 left. It's been nothing but punts every single play or every drive. Young trying to get away from pressure, and he finds a beautiful throw to the outside. The David and Joku, the tight end. Wow, that was really impressive, actually. <laughs> Took a shot and held on to the to the ball until he absolutely had to throw it. And then there's Miles Sanders up the middle for eight. So we opened the, the game. We punted twice. Carolina had to punt once. We started with the ball. And now Carolina is out here on their second drive. And they're looking to put something together. Quick blitz. And they're able to find a completion. From Mike Williams, a gain of six. Young so far before this drive looked very sporadic. He had to throw it away a few times because of pressure. This drive though, it seems like he's inviting the pressure. And there's a beautiful throw again to Njoku. Up the seam and he gets down to the 35. Carolina putting together a beautiful set of plays right now. Another quick drop back and a throw outside. And it is, who is 83? I'm not sure who that is. It was somebody in Thomas. Oh, that was a rookie, I think. Second and two. Oh, read option. Young going outside, and he is dragged down at the 18, a gain of nine. And the Panthers put it together an excellent drive as they find themselves now inside the red zone. With just under three minutes left in the first quarter, Sanders takes it on the inside zone. And he will not find much. Another handoff to Sanders. This time to the right side. And that one yields much better results. End up with a gain of nine. Third and inches. They're going to go like empty set here on third and inches. I, I like the move. Going end zone. Got it. Touchdown. It's Thomas. That's Michael Thomas. I'm an idiot. Michael Thomas for the touchdown. After the touchdown, we're back on offense. Chambers immediately under pressure. He goes down. Boogie Batsham. They had a blitz that got through on both sides. Put us in a very, very tough spot. Well, Chambers, that is. Second and 17. It's a quick throw to Godwin trying to get something positive. And we'll end up getting four yards back. But we are still going to be stuck here. Third and 13. We need a big play here. Chambers got time. Going deep. And he's off target for Godwin. And our slow offensive day continues as we wind down to the end of the first quarter. Thanks to the good play by their defense, Carolina starts at the 44. And oh, it's intercepted! I don't know how Jamel Dean managed to corral that one against Mingo. But he ends up with the ball, and we're going to get a huge turnover here. It looked like Mingo had it. It just slipped right through his hands, and Dean was just, I guess, ready for it. Just right place, right time. And that is the that is the kind of thing that we need to happen when there's some bad stuff going on. Now we just need to capitalize. 
We're down three starters, two of them on our line. Chambers has been pressured today. Let's find something good here. Chambers underneath the Godwin, and he'll get it down to the 44. Gain of six. And that play ended up bringing us to the end of the first quarter. But now, second quarter action. Chambers, quick snap, quick throw. It's Blake. And we get ourselves a first down, which is nice to see because it feels like they've been very hard to come by today. And Chambers now, second time this drive, he's called an audible. We got White in the backfield. We're going to throw out of this. It's a quick slant to Godwin who makes the catch, and he'll get five yards. If anything, these audibles are going to try to, I, I don't know if he's seeing something in particular, if he's just trying to throw the defense off. Oh, come on, man. We had such a good thing going after such a rough day, and then we get a, a, a full start. Like, we just can't have that kind of stuff, you know? Now it's second and ten. Real pitch play to White. I did not like that call, man. Not a good time to run a pitch. Third and nine now. Now we're really up against it. We need a big play. Come on, Chambers. Let's find something here, man. Quick snap. Quick throw. It's God when he makes the catch. He slips free. And he's gone for the touchdown. Chris Godwin. Just magnificent play after the catch. Breaking free from two tackles. Chambers put it on a rope to him. And wow, man. I just love watching Godwin work. A beautiful strike. He saw him sort of get into that soft pocket in the zone there. Underneath the safety. Above those underneath defenders. And then Godwin just using his strength to get us the touchdown. Carolina comes back on offense after the interception. They'll hand it off to Sanders on their first play, and he'll get about two yards. Not a big run. Bryce Young has had a decent start to the day. Early on, before the stuff that you guys saw, it was a lot of throwaways and whatnot. But he settled down the last drive, as you saw. Got them a touchdown, and oh, nice hit there by White. Forcing the incompletion. Third and eight. If we could get ourselves a defensive stop here, it would be big. Uh-oh. Young pushed out. He's going to run with it. And he's got a slide. White gets in front of him. And we will get the punt we needed. Good job of the defense. And there you saw it. Best drive of the day. 4 of 4, 54 yards for Tyler Chambers on the last one. We need another drive like that. Let's hopefully now we got some confidence. Shook off the rust from the earlier parts of the game. Hand off. White. Nice gap there. Wharton could not hold on to his block. That would have been a huge run if he could. But we still get eight yards. Not a bad run at all. Quan Samuel check it in. Play action rollout. Chambers looking underneath. He's got Otten. And we've got ourselves a first down. Shotgun on first. Another handoff for White. And he gets held up at the line. Carolina rally bringing them down after two hasn't been an easy day on the ground for us either like we had a one or two nice runs from white but outside of that it's been a lot of one two maybe three yards and there's a strike from Chambers as he finds Trey Palmer over the middle of the field getting us into field goal range those are the kind of strikes that I was hoping for when I went with medium passing Take advantage of that second level of the defense. And there he is again. Underneath for a nice gain of eight. Little crossing route. They definitely throw those things a lot earlier this Madden than they did the last Madden. I'll give Matt, I'll give EA that. They did fix that to some degree. And there's a nice run. That's what we needed. Short gain, but enough for the for the first down. But I don't know what I was gonna say there. Maybe Murph the first. Move the chains, something, something with an M. <laughs> but you guys got it. You get what I meant. Jabers going to right side, got Godwin, and once again, man, that's like his eighth catch of the day, isn't it? He has been catching like every pass. Six catches. Okay, six for 59, and of course, that touchdown. Chambers pushed out, trying to buy time, and he's got to throw it away. Good decision. I hate seeing the ball get thrown away, but I'd rather see that than, than have a sack, right? So, good decision there. He held on to it as long as he could. Third and five. 
And uh oh, he's under pressure. Brian Burns gets the sack. They collapse the pocket from all areas. But luckily, we'll at least be able to get three points out of this drive as Burns came screaming off. They pushed him back there. And then once that initial pressure up the middle took place, he just wrapped around outside and took full advantage of it. Down by three. 424 to go in the first half. Hand off to Sanders. And Timmy Baker does an excellent job of getting past that initial block and brings him down for a loss of one. Baker seems better fit in the middle, you know? Ever since we moved him outside, I thought he would actually excel, but he hasn't. So I think I think he needs to play in the middle, which means he either is not going to fit in this defense very often anyway, outside of when we're in our nickel set, or we're going to have to trade him. Third and inches. Hand off. Yeah. I figured they were going to get that. It looked pretty open as soon as that, that play was snapped. I saw the hole. I'm like, yeah, they're going there. First down. Oh, a little RPO. But Jamel Dean had other plans. He was trying to take it the other way. He wanted a second one. Was not able to capitalize, but it will be second down and an incompletion. And this time they will go to Sanders. Cuts it off to the right side a little bit. And he'll find himself for five. Young takes a snap. Pressure is picked up for a minute, but eventually we'll get through and we'll get the sack. It's Yaya Diaby. I'm going to give him credit for the full sack. I don't care what the stats say. Rashad White is 16 yards away from a 1,000-yard performance. So we just need him to, to, you know, just get a few more yards. Chambers. So oh, look at that beautiful play. And James Blake. With the speed, he's going to take it the distance. 67 yards for the tight end. We lined him up outside. It looks like he ran a slant and just burned the corner. And there was nobody back there. I don't know if that was a blown coverage or if we dialed up a beautiful blitz counter. But we'll take it 67 yards to the house for the tight end. We have scored 17 unanswered points. The Panthers, of course, put first blood on the table, 7-0. And since then, we've rattled off quite a feat here in this second quarter. Young just trying to get this team back on track, and that one is not going to do it. He was looking for Mingo, and that's one of those plays where I don't know if Young was off target or if Mingo didn't run the right route or run it correctly because that ball was well behind him. I mean, it was in an open space, but it was well behind him. That time, he's able to connect with Njoku underneath. He'll get eight yards. That's going to lead to a quick third down. Three split to the, to the left side. Young takes a snap. Over the middle, easy completion there for Mingo and a first down. Quick snap. Young going to run with it. Oh, a nice little crossbody throw, and Sanders turns it into a big gain of about 12 yards. And that right there is why Bryce Young could be special. He can move around the pocket, make the defense move, and in that case, sort of open up a window, and he had his eye on Sanders that whole time, kept it on him just enough to throw a little crossbody action in there, get that completion and get a first down. Something Carolina desperately needed after the last couple of drives, as now he calls a little bit of an audible here. He must have saw something. And, oh, didn't see that one, though. Holy cow. <laughs> he saw nothing there. I don't know what that was. That was a bad throw. And that was just a comeback route or a little hitch route there. Bad timing, I guess. Blitz coming. They pick it up. And a quick pass over the middle for a gain of about five. I'm not sure who it was on the catch. Oh, it was Michael Thomas. Of course it was. Quick route. Young. Going cross body again. And again it pays off. Michael Thomas. Down to the 30. Just as I called him a short route king, he goes ahead and gets us for like 10, 15 yards. Young again incomplete. Jamel Dean has been playing very, very good today. And it's a game that we needed him on too because we're short in the secondary. And he has stepped up in a big way. As now Young calling another audible, flipping sides of the field here looks like. 
And it's another missed completion. Trying to go underneath to Williams, it looked like, and it was just nowhere even close. Man, third and 10. 32 seconds left in the first half. They have one timeout remaining. And oh, they're going to get a big chunk there as Michael Thomas again up the seam down to the eight yard line and they are going to not call the timeout. They want one more crack at this end zone. I like this decision. And they will not get it, but he gets out of bounds. So they could take one more shot and they will. Good clock management right now from Bryce Young in this Panthers offense. I don't like it as a as a Bucks coach or whatnot, but I do appreciate it from Madden's standpoint. A good little um, like mixture of play calling there, and they will have to settle for three, but that's just because our defense did its job. And there we go, break started. We're up 17 to 10. All right, so the Panthers had a very quick three and out to start this second half, so we are going to go ahead and get our first drive underway here with 10:46 left. So very early on in this in the second half, and Chambers over the middle, Palmer with the catch. And he runs it out to midfield. 15 of 20, 213 yards for Chambers today. And of course, two passing touchdowns. He's having a pretty decent day so far. Oh man, White trying to get away from the defenders. But there was just too many there. Derek Brown cleaning up. Or no, Boogie Basham, I'm sorry, cleaning up. What Shaq Thompson started in the backfield, lost it too. Nice job of the defense. Another handoff, Samuel, and he will not be denied. Getting all those yards back and almost getting the first. It's going to be just shy. I mean, we are literally on the first down marker, but it still says we're short. Chambers, quick pass. It's incomplete. There's no way we punt this, right? There's no absolute way. You got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. Wow. I really can't believe we just punted that. I thought for sure we were going to go for it. I mean, we're at we're plus side territory, fourth and inches. And we, we punt it? I don't like that decision at all. I feel like we should have been more aggressive there. And off Sanders, and he has met right away. Vea not letting him through the lane. He'll get two. Second and eight. Young with a play action. Oh, he's looking to run, and he runs right into Kalijah Kansi for the sack. I talked about him before the game a little bit, and I'm not sure what the future holds for our DNs, but I just feel like we haven't gotten a lot of production out of them at all. Third and 12, over the middle. Completion to Njoku, and he almost gets across midfield, tripped up at the 47. The seam routes have been open today for Carolina. And Njoku has been on the receiving end of quite a few of them. 84 yards for him today on five catches. And that is the kind of lift that this offense needed. And now another little RPO to Tremble. And that goes nowhere. They'll give him a yard on the play. And it was Antoine Winfield over in coverage. Second and nine now. Young. Another seam route, but no dice. Duke Shelley breaks it up. It was Michael Thomas, the intended target. Third and nine now. Carolina doesn't want to let that big play go to waste. And they won't. A big time catch from Michael Thomas in traffic. Double covered. Doesn't matter. Eight catches, 64 for him. He hasn't been the most flashy today, but he has been the most consistent for Carolina. And off. Sanders gets five, but he is down. He doesn't know it yet. Oh, now he realized it. He goes to the bench. We'll see what kind of situation we have with him. I haven't even noticed if Wirfs came back yet. I'll have to see on the last drive. I haven't even paid attention. I don't think he has. Hand off up the middle, it's Davian, uh, Davis Price, Tyrion Davis Price, and he'll get 10 yards. Who knows, maybe you'll see uh, 
Some little action out of the uh, two back of burning backs here. Oh, the f I forgot to change dude's number. He's wearing number 18. God dang it. I don't know about you guys, man. I just, I feel weird with some numbers on players. Like, the teens on a running back, to me, it just looks absolutely weird. Let me know what you guys think about that. What are you doing, Price? You're supposed to be the backup, dude. Stop him. Hey, stop him. Jesus. They're getting carved up by the backup running back right now. I don't like this. Second and goal from the two. Carolina looking to tie things up. They'll pitch it. And Davis Price is in. Touchdown, Carolina. And that right there is why I felt like we should have been much more aggressive on that last drive. Carolina makes us pay for it by evening things out. Chambers and Co. coming back out. Like I said, man, not a fan of, of the passive aggress like the passiveness we had on the last drive. I really thought we should have went for it on that fourth down. And uh, oh, oh, big pass there to White. And he's down to the 45. That wheel route, it got us last episode against the Cardinals. This week, we ended up pulling it out, and he was wide open. Jeremy Chin was right behind him, but he was way too out of position to make it matter. First and 10. Let's get Taylor Ward involved here, for the love of God. I can't get that man the ball to save my life. Chambers underneath. Like, I've moved, like, this is the weird part, right? I've moved these guys around. Like, at one point, Godwin was number one. Wharton was number two. Godwin was in the slot. I saw that Godwin was getting every target. Made some adjustments. You know, and then it was Wharton at one. Godwin at two. Wharton in the slot. And then I... I reset it, and then I did formation subs, and then I moved where Trey Palmer was, and no matter what happens, Wharton just doesn't want the ball, or Chambers doesn't want to throw it to him. Oh, then, then yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know what it is. I thought maybe it was just like, because he's number one or number two, but no, it's just like, it's only Godwin. I, I don't get it, man. I mean, he's got the good enough stats to, to, you know, it's not like he's having a hard time, you know, finding ways to get open. Chambers has to throw that one away. It's third and ten. I just want Wharton to develop, man. I want him to. I, I know what he can do. You know, give him the opportunity. And now Chambers is. Oh my God! How the hell did we complete that? Holy shit! That was an incredible play. I thought we were dead to rights with a sack, and Chambers just puts that on a line to Blake. And we're going to end up getting a third down conversion off of that. That was a big play. Wow, I'm impressed. I formation for White. We'll go play action rollout. Chambers looking in the flats off target. How are you going to do that? How are you going to throw a beautiful play like that and then follow it up and miss an easy, easy flat route? That's crazy. And there's a pitch. And yeah, I'm just not a fan of pitches. It seems like they broke them again. They just don't seem to work very well. Unless you're Terry, Terry on Davis Price and you play for the Carolina Panthers. But for us, they don't work. Third and 12, once again, third and long situation. I don't like it. Chambers under pressure again. And this time he can't make magic. We're gonna have to settle for three. 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Bryce Young takes the snap. Over the middle, it's off target. 18 to 31. He's had quite a few of those today where it's just again, man, I don't know if this is like a receiver problem or a Bryce Young problem, but somebody is having some serious issues. Sanders back from injury, refusing to go down, and finally, after like the third or fourth attempt, is brought down after eight yards. Big run there as Sanders doesn't want David uh, Davis Price showing him up too much. He's got to do some fancy stuff now. Third and two. Or Carolina open up this fourth quarter. And off. Sanders easily gets the first down. He stopped there. He sat down. He made a sandwich. Decided which route he wanted to take. Plugged it into the GPS and took it. And it still worked. I don't know what took us so long to get to, get to the ball carrier. But Carolina had that thing mapped out perfectly. First and ten. 
Play action. Young going right back to Sanders in the flats. He finds him for a quick two yards. I was really expecting our defense to make a better effort on that third down run. I mean, he gave us the opportunity to. Uh-oh, pushed out. Across the body, almost intercepted. Devin White was on in the in the area in zone coverage and just I don't know if he wasn't expecting it or what just could not corral it in third and eight another quick snap young got plenty of time and this time he does throw an interception and it's Duke Shelley getting the pick second one of the day and that was one of the cleanest pockets he's had in the while and he just he just whiffed on it again we've seen it time and time again today this time it cost him dearly. Hand off to White. And he tries to bounce off of one. But he gets spun into Brian Burns, who proceeds to bring him down with ease. Second and seven. Another touchdown here really puts a lot of pressure on Carolina. They haven't been able to move the ball that consistently today. But neither have we, as we almost throw it directly to Stephen Cofield, the, the rookie middle linebacker. If he had a better face mask on that didn't look so stupid, he probably has an interception right now. That is a fact. Chambers, short. Oh, he's got Blake again. Adjustment to the ball. It was a little, it was thrown a little bit behind him, right? It was, a, it was sort of a bad pass, but he, he turns around. He makes the play against the defender, and that was a bad throw. It really was. But Blake bails out Chambers, and that's going to put him over 100 yards on the day. How many times has he gotten over 100 yards in a game? I don't think it's that many. Hand off. Samuel. And he will take it for two. Not a lot of running today. Definitely a bigger emphasis on passing, which I did want. It's just nice seeing Madden actually, you know, give that to me. Second and eight. As Chambers. Where were you throwing that, man? Okay, apparently he was mad about the face mask comment. Look, dude, I'm sorry, but the face mask is ugly. You didn't have to do that. But the other side, Chambers, where were you throwing that one, man? I mean, that was the, there, that was directly to him. That was that he ran the route. You could even see our receiver behind him. That was a rookie mistake. That was a bad, bad throw, and that might have just cost us, folks. Holy crap. It's second and 10 now, Carolina. And Sanders working his way through the traffic. And now Anthony Moore is hurt, man. What is happening in this game, dude? We, are got, we got two injuries coming in, two injuries right now throughout the game. It just comes in waves. I hope it's nothing serious, man. I really do. Sanders shut down by Winfield, and at least we'll get the stop and we'll force a field goal. And we'll force a punt, I mean, so that's good. So we, we were bailed out on the last drive. We got a nice stop after throwing the pick. Defense did an excellent job of holding it down. But now we need to step it up. And we'll start off with a nice throw to Godwin, a gain of eight. Carolina, not too bad of a defense. I mean, 10th overall for across the league, given their record, is pretty good. But we've done a pretty good job of making sure we're able to find some lanes. We just haven't been able to capitalize on too many different opportunities. And there goes Rashad White to the outside. He'll get the first down. 11 carries, only 30 yards for him today. Been a much quieter day for him, for sure. Six and a half to go. We're looking to try to close this thing out on this drive. We could take a good three minutes off this clock. Get some more points. And set ourselves up nicely for the late stages of this game. But we need better plays than that. Jack Thompson getting back there. He read that right away. It'll be a loss of one. And now Chambers is going to throw it. Pushed out of the pocket. Hit as he throws incomplete. And now the crowd is loud. They want this team to get this stop so bad right now. Third and 11. Chambers takes a snap. He looks over the middle and it's incomplete. Shaq Thompson again. Carolina gets the stop. 
So they do end up punting the ball. And we're going to take a quick snap. And it's a completion to James Blake, a gain of six. Five for 109 for him today. Chambers hands off White big play there gets us the first down we just need to control this ball right now we have the lead we have the ball we have the momentum just finish strong and we should be okay hand off to Samuel trying to find his way through traffic and he'll get four yards now one of the three minute mark Chambers looking short. No, he throws an interception again. You've got to be kidding me. We are just, we're trying to throw this game away right now, man. I don't know what Chambers is doing. Young with the ball, throws it incomplete. Looking for Dean. And Young throwing it short, a gain of three. I just feel like we're going to end up playing from behind here. Third and seven, two-minute warning. We send an all-out blitz, and it works. A clutch decision there, and it pays off big time for our defense. Oh, they're going to go for it. I guess I'm not surprised. Fourth and seven, Young takes a snap. He's pushed out of the pocket. He's going to run with it. No, he decides not to. Throws it short, and it's going to be a penalty. Oh, my God. His decision to not throw, it's going to cost them dearly. That might have just, that might have just cost him the game. I can't believe he decided not to run it. He had plenty of, of room. He had a first. The defense dropped with the receivers. There was nobody there. And there goes Samuel. He can't get outside. Now Carolina calls her second timeouts, third and six. And there, this game is not over yet, folks. It, it might seem like it, but it's not. Oh, God, what a big play there. That's a big first. And we're just going to down this one out. And we're going to somehow get ourselves a victory, even though we tried to give it away how many times? Wow, that was a nail-biter at the end there, folks. But we end up getting it done. And the first of our final three will count as a W. Going to run a play or two here, but game is all but over. And there goes Rashad Whiter on the outside, and that is it, folks. Awesome game. All right, so after that game, we ended up finding out that Tristan Wirfs is going to miss uh, the next game. Abdominal tear. We'll get Bronson and Malk back, of course, but he will be out for the Seahawks game. But now taking a look back at the game, we ended up being 30 yards short of having 350 passing yards. He ended up with 320, two touchdowns, two picks, not a very good rating, 23 of 38. But we got the job done. Miles Sanders was the best running back of the day, 16 for 62. Uh, Rashad White, 14 for 52. Um, actually, I mean, you could probably say Davis Price actually had a way better day <laughs> than Miles Sanders even. But I mean, it was only a couple of runs where he really popped off. Uh, receiving wise, James Blake, man, five for 109. Chris Godwin, nine for 91. And Joku had a big day for Carolina. Same with Michael Thomas. Um, and then Wharton had one catch for seven yards. I have to find a way to get him involved more, guys. There's no reason he shouldn't be getting the ball. It's crazy. You know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Defensively, there was a few big plays, a couple of sacks. Uh, Boogie Basham with one, Brian Burns. For us, we had Kalijah Kansi getting one, and then Devin White and Yaya Diaby teaming up for the second one. Um, interceptions galore, man. Four, two on each side. Von Bell with one. Duke Shelley and Jamel Dean getting ours. And then Steven Cofield getting the one. And that one was really bad. That throw, Chambers, man, that was horrible looking. I don't know what he was thinking on that throw. That was crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's sort of how this game ends up. You know, it, we we barely get out of there alive, but we get the win. And that brings us to week 17. 
We're sitting at 11 and four, and now Falcons are at nine and six. We might have clinched our, or we clinched the division. I'm just not sure if I want to see both of these next games. You know what I mean? Maybe we'll watch the Seahawks game and then sim the next Carolina game since we just watched them this episode. I think that would probably be a better option. So things are getting interesting. We've locked up our playoff spot. We are just trying to seal the deal for the number one seed, which we should still have. Uh, but Philly is right on our tail. They're they're at 10 and four or 10 and five, I think. So we have to be on the lookout for them to still get get us, you know, tied. And I'm not sure what the tiebreaker looks like there if they end up tying our record or not. As for this video, that is all I have for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you have not already and hit that bell notification. And I will see you guys next time.